Hi there, it's Colin Smith from PhotoshopCafe.com and I'm going to show you some of my favorite features inside the 2014 release of Photoshop CC. So we're going to have a look at my favorite features in regards to working with photographs. So we're just going to jump in here really quick. We're not going to spend a lot of time in here. I'm just going to give you an overview of the features and then later on I'll post more in-depth ones of the different uh, tutorials and stuff on here. So don't forget to subscribe and then that way you'll know when I post the new videos. So what we've got here basically is I've got a background layer of a car and then I just copied the car onto a new layer. It's not even a great selection. Uh, I just wanted to do it quickly. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this car and make it in motion. So the first thing I'm going to do is with the background selected, notice that is not going to matter if I turn this on or off. We're going to apply a new type of blur. So we're going to go into the filter blur and under the blur there's actually blur gallery. You'll see three you should be familiar with, Field, Iris, and Tilt Shift. The two new ones are the Path Blur and the Spin Blur. So let's start with the Path Blur. So we're going to apply this. And what it does is enables us to create this non-destructive blur in here. It's non-destructive until we apply it. So if you look here, you see there's a little arrow. And that arrow is pointing in the direction that this blur is going in. So I could change this and change it to any direction that I want. Notice that the car in the front is not moving because it's on a separate layer. And we're only working with the back layer. So what I want to do is I'm going to increase the speed and that's going to increase the blur. Now one of the things that I like to do sometimes, particularly in a situation like this, because we've got blur here in the back and we've also got it in the front of the car. So I'm actually going to turn off the centered and then what it's going to do is it's going to give us a little bit more of a rear shutter kind of effect where the motion is happening and then uh, it's sharp at the front so it looks like the uh, motion is happening behind the car. Now we can take the taper and what the taper will do is enable us to change how this kind of interacts at the end. So we'll shorten the length of that. See there, we can change that by tapering it. And what the taper is basically doing is it's just making the uh, curve fall off a little smaller, the blur, sorry. So we're just going to drop that taper down to about there, maybe give it a little bit more speed so it still looks like we're moving and we're not stationary in the parking lot. So there's different things that we can do with this too. If we wanted, we could click and drag to add a point. And if we grab that point, we could actually curve this. So just for fun, let's give it a little bit of a curve, almost, you know, um, like you would get on a Fast and the Furious, just to show the, the uh, real appearance of just massive speed. So we've got a little bit of a curve going on there, just to add some visual interest. So I'm now just going to click OK to apply it. And then if we hide the top layer, once it's applied here, you can see what it's done. You can see how that curve was actually blurring that in a curve. And that's very useful for a number of things. In fact, very difficult to get that in Photoshop before without doing some stuff in Liquify. And it was very hard to get that Liquify to look that natural. So what we're going to do now is we've got this car skidding down the road at a very high velocity. We need to make these wheels spin. So I'm going to select the layer of the car on top, and we're going to go under the Blur Gallery again. This time we're going to use the next option, which is a spin blur. And a spin blur is great. This enables us to uh, do different things. So we're going to move the point here right in the center of that wheel. And I'm going to grab these points and I'm going to drag them down a little bit. And notice as we drag these points, we can change the shape and the size of this particular uh, blur here. And I want to get that right in the middle of the wheel. And another thing you'll notice is we can go on screen there, we can turn that all the way up and increase or decrease the amount of blur. So let's go to about there. And it's really nice to be able to do this visually because uh, before we'd have to, you know, make a selection and then we'd apply the radial uh, filter. Uh, and this way we can actually visually see what's happening. So these little dots in here, if we drag these dots down, they actually control the fall off or the feathering. So I'm going to take them up to about there so we've got this nice effect coming off on the wheel there. Now here's another little tip. If you hold down the Option Command key and it would be Control Alt on Windows, you can actually drag out an exact copy of that. So we're going to take that to the back there and now we're just going to reshape it to fit this wheel. So if we go like that, it's reshaping it and the blur is going all the way around and we're going to apply it. So there we go. We've now put this car in motion. So you can see that was a lot of fun. Now we could, you know, do things with the windows and other things, and we'll do that when we do a more in-depth tutorial later on. So let's have a look at some of the other things we can do. What I really want to focus on right now is a content-aware fill. 
here we go. We have this particular, um, it's kind of a Western scene, but it's being ruined a little bit because we've got these contrails here coming from an aircraft. And as you know, back in the Western days, planes hadn't been invented yet. So let's zoom in a little bit. And let's have a look at fixing this first one with the content aware fill. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the, um, the patch tool. Actually, I'm going to grab the content aware patch. So we're going to go in here. We're going to grab the patch tool. And then we're going to change the patch to content aware. Now, this is what previously happened. I'm going to make a selection around there. And what I want to do is just take that selection and I'm going to drag it up over here to fill up that area, release it. And, it, and it's not bad, but notice how we get this really bright area here because the tones are not really matching exactly. Um, if you don't know what the photograph is supposed to look like, you could sort of get away with it, but someone looks at it too close, they're going to notice. So here's a new option. If we go up into the adaptation here, you'll notice we've got structure and color. And color is a new one. We're going to give this about a 7. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to blend the, um, the color now. So let's make sure we've got that set to 7. I'm going to click and drag this patch. And I'm going to release it up here, let it go. And look at that. Look at how much better that matching was. Much, much better. Let's go over here. I'm going to grab the other one. I'm just going to select around it and click and drag. And that just does a much, much better job of fixing that sky. So this color really works well in areas of gradients and, uh, and solid colors and stuff like that. So um, definitely very happy with that. So let's have a look over here. I've got another thing I'd like to do. Let me just go through. I've got a lot of uh, images here. So the next thing I'm going to show you here is actually um, a new way of making selections. So a new way we can make these selections now is if we go under Select and then we go down to the Focus area, it's actually going to make a selection based on the actual focus of the photograph. So I'm just going to let this go in automatic. I'm not going to do anything right now. And we're going to let it do a sample. And look at this. If we turn this on and off, you can see it's done a pretty darn good job here of trying to figure out what's in focus and what isn't. So I'm just going to change this to a different color so we can see a little bit better, more like a mask kind of a finish. Now, if we were to increase this to a higher number, you'll, you'll see what happens here. Let's bring it all the way up. It'll start to take more in focus. See that? Some of these areas now are coming into focus that weren't. And if we go to the left, it's actually going to have less areas in focus. See that? So I'm just going to pull this up a little and see how close we can get. We're getting very, very close. It's looking pretty good. So we've got a little brush here. I'm going to take this brush. Now, let's have a look at it before and after so we can see there's just a tiny little bit of area there that I'd like to include. And I'm just going to drag over those. And I went too far, so I'm going to hit the Option key and just drag through there and it'll subtract it from the selection. And I'm going to do the same thing with the Option key there and here. And let's see how close we can get in here. Getting pretty close. And we can get a reasonably good selection right there. Maybe hit the Option key in there and just tap once. Boom. And it's not bad. So if we can make it better though, because we happen to have right here is, uh, you know, we've got other options. We can play for the noise, etc. Um, but what we're going to do is just grab the Refine Edge. And now we've got Refine Edge turned on. I can actually hit our Radius. We could play around with that if we wanted to get a better result. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just grab the brush here. And I'm just going to click, make it a little bigger here. And I'm just going to click and drag that through the chain and see how good a, good a job I can do just refining that edge here inside of Photoshop's Refine Edge. And so let's change it actually. Let's go to the uh, on white. We can see there or on black. On white's looking pretty good. And look at that. We were even able to get in there between those little holes in that chain there. Now you could play around a little bit more with some of these edges and get them really nice. Let's show the radius here. Increase it a bit more. Just kind of see where we're at. And we're just going to click OK. We're going to drop this to a new layer for layer mask. Click OK. And you can see this is mastered out, and it's done a pretty decent job there, you know, to get us started making that selection. Now, of course, you could go around the edges and refine it and make it even better, but that's nice to have another way of making selections. And I think I'm going to find this one very useful in conjunction with some of the other tools inside of Photoshop. So I'm not going to save that. I'm going to go over here, and let me just close out some of these other things that we're not using right now. We'll just close that out. I'm not going to save it. 
and let's go all the way over here. I'm going to close that out. Not saving that either. And we're going to close this out. So the last thing I'm going to show you here is something that is very underrated. Um, and that's using LUTs or lookup tables. So imagine taking this photograph, which obviously needs some adjustments. Now, if I go and apply these adjustments to it using a bunch of adjustment layers, different blend modes and opacities, and I create what's known as a look for this photograph, I can actually reuse this as almost like the Rolls Royce of presets. So let's have a look at it right now. So we've got this object here, it's working as a smart object, but one of the things I have to do in order to make this really work is, first of all, I'm gonna go to camera raw, double click it, and uh, since it's a raw file, and I'm just gonna play around, I'm gonna cover some highlights here a little bit, and I'm just gonna work on the photograph a little, and I'm just adjusting my exposure, dropping it down, we can fix this later, give it a little bit of clarity, a little vibrance, maybe give it a little more exposure, let me give it some more exposure, I'm gonna take these whites, bring them back, because we're losing a lot of that stuff in the clouds there. Um, maybe there, it's pretty good, so I'm just gonna click OK. So now the secret to making this work as a look, as a uh, color light, what we have to do is convert this to a background, because you have to have a background layer. So we're gonna go under the layer, and then under layer, what we're gonna do is we're going to change the, uh, the layer here. We're gonna go down to the, um, not the layer style, but we're going to do the, uh, where are we now, where, where we put this, hang on a second here, here we go, we're going to go new background from layer, and now that's going to convert that to a background. So now let's create some adjustments. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a curve adjustment, and um, with the curves, let's just pop this out so we can see it, let's give it a little contrast, darken it off a little bit there, lighten up the highlights a little. Well, actually, let's bring the highlights down. I want to recover that. So let's just do that. So we're kind of doing this kind of a curve. Uh, let's do something else on here. Let's do a color. Let's do a solid color on here. So let's do that. We're going to do the uh, color. So we're going to grab the solid color. Let's grab, um, you know, a bluish color, a bluish shade. Click in there. We're going to change the blend mode to color. You can drop this all the way down. And then just give it a, just a touch of color there. Okay, that's looking good. So what else do we want to do? Well, let's see what other adjustments we can do in here. There's a number of different adjustments. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it a black and white adjustment. And with this black and white, we can have some fun. Grab this little tool here, and we can change some of the tonality of this photograph by using the black and white in the different areas. That's looking nice. But then what I'm going to do is I'm now going to change this to luminosity. So what I'm actually being able to do is just darken off certain areas of the photograph that I wanted without changing the color. So I've got one with luminosity, I've got one with color, and we've got one with curves. So it kind of shows you something. So if we go there, there's before, and there's after. Now, we can play around with these. As you see, this one's got a different uh, blend mode. This one's got a different opacity. And then we've just got a straight curve there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this so I can reuse exactly this setup. So what I'm gonna do is choose File, and I'm gonna choose Export. Under Export, you'll see an option here that says Color Lookup Tables. So I'm gonna do this, uh, I can give it a name, copyright, all that kind of stuff, but we're not gonna, for now, I'm just gonna choose the high quality, and I'll just call this uh, Collins Look. Uh, actually, I, that's my copyright, so let's just do, put my name in there. And notice we've got these different formats. I'm not going to get into all the formats, but the 3D look is actually the one we're going to be using, the 3D light. And that's the one that works on RGB. So I'm just going to click OK, and I'm just going to drop this. Uh, why don't we just put this on a desktop? I'm just going to pop it on a desktop right now, and I'll call it um, Cool Blue. So there's a Cool Blue LUT, and I'm just going to hit Save. All right, done. So we've saved that. Now let's have a look over here. I'm going to go to another photograph. Here's a photograph that's untouched right now. And this is how we reuse all of these adjustments. So I'm going to go under here and I'm going to choose the uh, color lookup. And then under color lookup, we under the 3D light, click there to load it. So let's do that. Let's go to our desktop here. On our desktop, we're going to grab the one that we created called Cool Blue, and we want to do the 3D. Notice we created all the different ones. You can see them all there, and I'm just going to click Open. And look at that. It's applied that entire LUT. I can turn it on and off as an adjustment layer right there to our photograph. So you can see how we're able to 
create these incredible looks, which are a series of all the different adjustment layers and different adjustments, and we can apply these. These, in my opinion, are the best um, presets ever. Um, you can just do so much with them. So that kind of uh, finishes this up. Now, if you want to get this a lot, I'll give it to you. Uh, just look at the link underneath, down the bottom there. I'll give you the link to this a lot. And don't forget, uh, comment, like, and follow. And don't forget to subscribe to Photoshop Cafe. And at the same time, head over to photoshopcafe.com forward slash cc for a lot more detail on the new features of the 2014 release of Photoshop Cafe. CC and also other um, CC updates that are coming out in the future. So thanks for watching. See you later.